Who will be the 10th Senate president? That's the question we're going to be dissecting tonight as the race for Senate president uh, to the 10th National Assembly kicks off. And all eyes are on INEC as coalition has been halted on supplementary elections held in Adamo State over the weekend. This is Post Politics. I am Mary Anakol. No fewer than 11 APC senators elect out of the 59 so far cleared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, have signified their interest in the number one position of the nation's apex legislative institution. They are Senators Sani Musa North Central, Jibrin Barao Northwest, Oji Kalu Southeast, Goswil Akbabio South South, Osita Izunaso Southeast, Peter Ndubezi Southeast, Abdulaziz Yari Northwest, Ahmed Lawan, Northeast, Ali Ndume, Northeast, David Umahi, Southeast, and Adams Ashomale from the South South. Now, the leadership and members of a strong coalition made up of 43 opposition senators elect are now the beautiful brides of the aspirants for the position of the Senate presidency. Now, ranking senator of the All Progressive Congress, uh, APC, who are aspiring to lead the 10th Senate, are now looking beyond the zoning arrangements being planned by the leadership of the party. Now other minority parties are the Labour Party and the New Nigeria People's Party, the NNPP, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APCA, and the Young Progressive Party, YPP. Well, joining us to discuss this tonight is Tamano Williams. He is former chairman of Okrika Local Government in River State. So good to have you join us, Mr. Williams. Good evening. Oh yes, good evening, and my foremost pleasure to be with you guys. Great. Great. Um, let's start by looking at, you know, the fact that the APC obviously is in the lead. They're the majority. And, of course, for them to be able to get every single vote that they need to get an emergence of a Senate president, uh, the PDP and, of course, the Labour Party, uh, like I said in my intro, are the beautiful bride. But let's get back to the basis. As we speak right now, of course, these are all senators-elect, and there's a lot of jostling happening right now. Um, where should everybody be looking? Because we see more Southeast um, people contending, or candidates contending for this position. Well, uh, our politics in Nigeria is still at its infancy, so to speak. And that is because the parliamentary culture and conventions have not crystallized into where you can talk with high level of uh, predictability. Uh, that notwithstanding, the incoming president, if so uh, facto, all things being equal, Saturday's Paribus is coming from the south south. And then, if you micro uh, um, analyze it, it's from the southwest. The question is, can the Southeast you know, present a Senate president, which means that the southern part of Nigeria will bring number one, and then number three, of course, is from Northeast. And then the next position, which is Senate presidency, which is the head of the National Assembly, will now come from the South. South. Mm. Yes. So I don't, I don't see that as um, political, politically expedient. Mm. You know, so... I agree that the Southeast have been out of equation for a long time. But if you look at political expediency and national cohesion, I think that uh, the Senate presidency ordinarily should go back to the North. That is my uh, political permutation for peace. Recall and that before now, we've been talking about uh, marginalization, the North, uh, in this uh, uh, outgoing government seem to have zoned a lot of the positions to the north. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, and a lot of people have discussed that, in fact, if you listen to um, Fashola yesterday, uh, he was begging the point, uh, with profound respect, he you know, was begging the point when the question was posed to him. So I think that the senior presidency ordinarily should go to the north. 
Okay, Let, let's look at the zoning situation. I mean, I'm going to go, you know, with all of the parties and where they're coming from. Like I said earlier on, there, there seems to be more southeastness. But so far, we've seen Senator Alin Dume, who has thrown his hat into the ring, obviously, signifying that he's, uh, you know, interested in that particular position. We've also seen, uh, I think, um, Elisha Abo, who is also uh, a member of the APC, he used to be in the PDP, joined the APC. Um, we see Shehu Buba, who's of the APC, is from Balchi State. Um, and then, of course, uh, we see, um, I mean, un unfortunately, um, whoever has to come from the north has to come from the majority. But how many of these people from the north, like you have said, for you know, for peace and, and, and justice and fair play, being that the president-elect is from the South-South, um, the, the, the second person or the third person who is the Senate president uh, needs to come from the North. But looking at, looking at those who have indicated interest to run for this office from the North that you're talking about, who, do, who stands a better chance? Uh, because it looks also like um, this might just be not just about the personality, but who would be able to, you know, win the battle within the party. Yes, very well. The, like I, I said in my introductory uh, opening remarks, you know, our politics is yet to just allow us uh, into where we can talk with people. But currently, um, the greater part of the persons who are, uh, coming, in, are coming from the South, you know, for the political mathematics, uh, so the mathematics is is not clear. It's not clear. Why America is not clear? At the end of the day, the decisions and the outcome will not be based on geopolitics. It will be based on political expediency. But my take is that if the party does not zone, which is critical, and I tell you the party is uh, working towards uh, coming out of the zoning point, we don't we don't zone. And then it came, if it's thrown open, it may go to the highest bidder. Mm. It may not be on the platform of justice, equity, and national interest. So uh, uh, to make a guess will be difficult. Mm. be very difficult because we cannot state with certainty that the voting will not follow issues of national. It may actually be the person with the highest uh, cash. And then, what is the interest of the president elect? Um, he has a lot to do. And I believe that at the end of the day, uh, with what we hear in the gray line, that uh, it will be based on national interest. So, it will be the capacity of the candidate. With his capacity, okay, we know that uh, Fabio has been with me for a long time. Mm. He has a qualification, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Ashomele has a qualification. The capacity, and then uh, in Dume, it's from the northeast where the, the vice president comes from. So automatically, he cannot be considered. Yeah. That would be over concentration. Yeah. And if you go over to the other guys too, the guy from Bauchi um, has a chance. But like I said, mm. it may it will not be on capacity. It will be on the interest of the of the current of the president, incoming president, and then the, the APC internal politics. You, you, you made mention of something before we go into the personalities who are in this race and you talked about capacity in terms of those who've been in the National Assembly for longer, the likes of former Governor Goswila Pabi. But let's stay on an issue that you raised, um, going to the highest bidder. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to you know, quiz you on. Uh, we, we all watched, I mean, the whole country watched and saw what happened during the APC primaries and, um, you know, all that transpired and all those who... Um, aligned and realigned and, and of course uh, that brought the about the emergence of the president-elect uh, do we see that happening now because again there's news that foreign exchange is making its way into the hands of a couple of people um, there's, there's just some form of um, uh, what, what's it called vote buying uh, we're seeing that again even though uh, many people will not own up to it but we're hearing that that's what's happening monies are exchanging hands uh, do we see a repeat of what happened at the APC prim primaries um, before the emergence of the president-elect play out again uh, in this race for the Senate presidency well uh, um, 
I need to talk empirically. Empirically, what happened at the APC primary? I was I was not uh, an, uh, a delegate, so I did not see. But we heard that dollars there was dollaring, you know, the dollaring. But apart from the APC uh, presidential primary, money has played a dominant role in politics worldwide, worldwide. And the report we have now is that back in the national village today, they said a million naira is going to be a max by some kind of for each uh, member of the Senate to vote for that person's uh, candidature. And there are not many. There are not many. So I, I am the firm belief that if what is in the media is, is anything to go by, it is correct, uh, money will play a big role. Because a lot of these candidates spend a lot of money to buy, to purchase from, to contest, and even order the campaign. And you can imagine the level of sc scramble for that position. Mm. It indicates to one point that he will emerge the student president. Yeah? It's going to be pecuniary, you know, it's going to be uh, 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 there's a lot of financial benefit from the position. Mm. So I can tell you that I'm convinced that unless the President elect pushes the state down and is able to rein in, you know, members of the party and convince them that let national interest prevail, which I doubt is possible. Because participation in Nigeria is at is, is at its kindergarten stage. So my take is that money will play a role, no matter the, 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 the position that comes at. Even if it's going to be national interest. That interest will be backed up by financial investment. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. If we see this playing, and I, 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 I know, I know that you're not in the Senate, but of course we're all stakeholders in our nation's democracy, whether we like it or not. Um, bearing in mind also that there's still very much aggrieved people as a result of what happened, you know, the outcome of the elections. And, and there's still, I mean, looking at what happened in Adamawa State, um, there's so many people who have grievances. But if we are still on the page of dealing with vote buying and it's, we're still seeing it play out um, even now as we're getting ready to see or um, people are positioning themselves for these offices, who's to, what's the guarantee that we're going to have the right people in the right places, especially for those who are in charge of you know, um, the writing our laws and pushing for bills that would, like you said, uh, benefits national interests, who's to say that that would, one way or the other, be the case if we're still dealing with vote buying and financial inducements as opposed to um, people, you know, deserving that office based on their track records? Yeah, the, 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 the situation is, uh, incidentally, it's not so peculiar to Nigeria, the only that ours is for now. Take your mind back to the... Um, United Nations uh, House of Reps, you know, the fellow who emerged to pick up the House of Reps by character and by conduct, in my opinion, things have been disturbed. You know, the current American president, sorry, the former president, Donald Trump, going through all sorts of ethical issues, they're aware. Mm -hmm. in, fact, in fact, the issue of the, the, the sex related and all issues, Bribing, in fact, is yes. 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 Uh, what's that name? Storm, Storm, Storm Dan Stormy Stormy Daniels. Daniels, yes. Yeah. So, so politicians, 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 politicians who, who, who live by politics, you know, the operational world is expediency, result. You know, national interest is incidental to result. That's my taking as a political scientist. You know. So, we cannot guarantee that the best candidate in the next is next president. We can't guarantee that. You know why? Mm -hmm. Look at the history of previous next president. Some military experience, administrators, you know, and all that. With their academic experience, or work experience, you know, uh, uh, resolve, or they need to influence the outcome of the legislation. Most of them know. So I can just talk of only one. What is the name? Um, the former president uh, who stood his ground to say we can't have a party and just keep it, it's just 
coming out of my of my brain. Mm. I remember it. Okay. Yeah. So so what I'm saying is that just come. There is no parameter or there are there are no conditions mm -hmm. currently on ground that can guarantee the Nigerian masses to have a single president who we will say unanimously that this one pays the bill. It's the people's choice. Look at, look at the array of candidates. If I'm to make a choice, I won't say it, you know, there are few persons who have the character and integrity and a value system to drive the system. Mm. See, to become a president, your first objective will be the interest of the country. But unfortunately, Nigerians, 90% of us, do not consider our country's interest first. Mm. So, Whoever can, whoever the system considers most appropriate will emerge. Or who has the deepest pocket, pocket will emerge. Either way, the interest of Nigeria is not denominated. Oh, th that's quite unfortunate. But let's go back to the politics of it. Uh, recently, the PDP um, national was threatening sanctions, being that, um, again, the fallout of the elections, the general elections, um, what happened in River State raised a lot of eyebrows. And uh, um, we see that PDP members on the floor of the National Assembly who are termed as Governor Wike's men seem to be allegedly aligning already with members of the APC to give them the numbers. And, of course, those who are not necessarily termed as Wike's men at the National Assembly seem to be kicking against it. What's your take <coughs> on this? I mean, does it come to you as a surprise, being that you, of course, were in River State and saw what happened? No, it's not. It's not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to me. The 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 key variables are this one: that the build up to the elections in River State, to realize that there was not. Are you still there, Mr. Williams? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. Yeah, yes. we we lost you for a second. Go ahead, please. Yes. Said so the, the River State governor was saying that the, it was a turn of the sound to produce the next president. Okay? And that if that was not possible, at least the chairman of the party should come to the south. That this was what was provided for in their constitution. I agree with him on that point. I think we're losing you, but I, I'm, I'm going to come back again. Okay, to that point. Okay, Mr. Williams, I think we lost you for a second. We couldn't hear what you were saying. So you said, the last thing you said was that you agree with uh, Governor Wike on the fact that it was a turn of the South to lead, yes. you know, in the presidency. Um, yes, I agree with him completely. Uh, but, the, that, but, okay, go ahead, go ahead, please. That led to the agitation back and forth, and you got the, the G5 and all that. So you can see that the vote in River State was was tilted towards the APC presidential candidate. And for the first time, uh, the APC won the candidate in River State. So you can see that there appears to be some level of, um, some level of approachment or some level of understanding eh, in River State that at the national level, it will, not be, it will not be inappropriate to form alliance. Because what people will want at this time is to see that from the center, eh, the state benefits enormously. Enormously. And that's what I, I see. So I'm not surprised if some persons in the National Assembly are going to support the APC. Because in politics, what are we looking at? We're talking about how river state can advance, mm. how river state can grow, you know, how river state can benefit. And we see where the treasure base. For these few years or so, we within the rivers we did not see that kind of um, um, uh, enormous, you know, but, but, do you, but do you not think that the reason why, because again, correct me if I'm wrong, some some half the time the politicking or or what, who gets what is as a result of who supported who. I mean, remember what President Buhari said um, um, when when he was receiving his um, certificate of return back in the day about those working for those who voted for him. I mean, so again, whether the PDP, I mean, because River State is, is a PDP state. Was sure, a PDP, PDP state. state yeah. And you saying that River State has not enjoyed a lot, is it not because the, the River, River States at the time were voting in the PDP you know, direction? Now that the 
River State has, in quotes, um, voted for the APC, of course. There's that certainty, whether we like it or not, um, in our way of politicking, that things, certain things would go to them because of what they did and how they, what weight they pulled to get the presidency to where he is, or the president-elect to where he is today. So I don't know if it's um, the alignment that should be a reason, because I, I'm guessing also, correct me again if I'm wrong, the president-elect is not going to be president of those who voted for him, but he actually is vying for the position of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So why should he be prioritizing some and not the others? Well, I, I think that um, from my knowledge of politics and personality study, the Tinubu presidency will be diametrically different from the Gwari presidency. How so? Can you hear me? Yes, no, how no. so? How so? You're saying it will be different. Yeah. What, would, yeah. what would differentiate it? Yes. Tinubu, from analysis of, of his politics, his policies, his, his engagement, is, is, is a man of superlative, superlative political engineering. Which is to say, he, ha he, know, he, he has had a clear vision of what he wants, what he wants to see. That we can go back to what happened in Lagos. And there are Couldn't that also have been said about, for, I'm so sorry to talk over you. Couldn't that have also been the same thing that people said about President Buhari before, I mean, we're here now, almost he handing over. Yeah. A lot of people have said that he was going to be a no-nonsense person. His leadership was going to be more, um, you know, directional. It was going to address yeah, all of yeah, the issues. But yeah. here we are, almost eight years down the line, and nothing has happened. But here we go again with the rhetorics and, you know, the waxing lyrical about what will happen. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the point you made is correct. A lot of us felt that Buhari, with his military, military experience and Living like living his pattern life, the man who lives uh, a frugal life, you know, and we're going to see a lot of changes. But we have seen that when you look back at the at all these days, from the Yagon era to P to PTDF and all that, there is a pattern. You know, there's a pattern. I don't want to go into that, but the point is that the Ari presidency did not throw up a throw, throw up enough novel ideas. Mm. Like, you know, you recall that he was he had challenges of health, which to a great extent reduced his capacity to deliver, you know. And then from the president, the presidency became more pronounced. I will leave it at that. And I know that the listeners uh, uh, who are intentional understand what I mean. <laughs> in the case of Tinubu, okay. Yeah, no, I, I can I can pause for you to. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I was just chuckling. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, okay. But I repeat that. President Buhari, his tenure ended up in the presidency. You know, so the, the presidency was was like an amalgam of people, institutional. The president is the person. What we what we expect in Tinubu's uh, uh, leadership is that those core ideas, those core ideas, ideas of 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 um, um, devolution of powers, ideas of autonomy to states, to 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 local government. You know. Ideas that we talk about through federalism are the ideas we expect him to drive. Mm. Eh? And okay. if you see, even even a can canvas that. Now those ideas will bring about some level of diversification of economy and space of authority. It will bring excellence, uh, 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 all things being equal. So coming back to the, the, the core point, the point is that the Tinubu presidency is expected to run a pan-Nigerian government. Okay, because he is a Democrat, called Democrat, I, I, from my own an analysis. Mm. Buhari evolved from a military ruler to a Democrat. And his, his success level was much more higher when he was in the, was the military head of state. You know? And then with his age and his desire not to be seen to be a harsh, his decision-making policy became very slow, very slow. And the team he assembles, you know, the team that we use is, is critical. Look at Chelsea as an example. Lampard was brought in when the former uh, coach wasn't doing well. The coach doesn't change things easily. The team delivers faster for a kind of coach. Okay. Look at Mujosto Moino. When he goes to a club, he puts the team together and Roma is succeeding. I'm using this to, to illustrate the point I'm making. Okay. We expect that Tinibu will assemble a world class team. 
and then there'll be coordination. In Buhari's government, I can tell you for free, there was zero coordination. Well, zero coordination. Well, but and that is why. Barista Williams. That is, Barista Williams. Yes, that, yes, sorry, that's why you, you, can, you cannot see anything delivered to the latter. Okay. Well, all of these things are hopes, uh, and I'm hoping that these hopes <laughs> would come into fruition. Everything that you have said remains to be seen. Let's see how long it will take um, for all of these things to come to play. But um, we're going to keep our eyes on what's happening on the floor of the Senate and um, who emerges at the end of the day. But we want to appreciate you. Tamano Williams is former chairman of Okrika Local Government in River State. A pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. All right. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the suspension of results coalition in Adamawa State and, of course, what happened to the wreck. Stay with us.